Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA. Today I'm up at Timeless Customs and I'm ridiculously beyond excited to get to debut Vicious Mustang 2.0. So before we get started, just real quick, I wanna make a mention and a massive thanks to my friends at SeaTac Chargers, not only for supporting and sponsoring this episode, but for making the best charger in the business. This is what I use at my storage facility and it's all I use for one reason only. It's truly the best charger in the market. So for your charging needs, I highly recommend check out SeaTac Chargers. Second up, in commemoration of the re-release of Vicious Mustang of introducing the world to 2.0, we've made an Autotopia LA shirt with Vicious Mustang and I'm super, super excited about the shirt. We also have a hat. The store goes live right now at atlamerch.com. So if you like the shirt, you like the hat, we did a limited run, go check it out. So by the time you're seeing this video, Vicious 2.0 has been unveiled in the SeaTac booth at SEMA 2023. I'm sure people have gone nuts over it because as great as this car looked before it was hit, and here's the brief history for any of you that followed the car. This car was living, breathing, running, going out to shows, going out to the racetrack, having fun, driving it. One of the most outrageous cars I would have to say ever built in the pro touring and resto mod world. The car was hit. Cosmetically, the whole left side of the car was tore up pretty good by a big lifted truck during one of the quarantine cruises. And so over the last couple years, the car underwent a massive transformation. So I'm gonna bring Jason from Timeless Customs in. Jason's the owner of Timeless. He designed and oversaw the build of this entire car. And I want him to come in because we've never done a proper episode on Vicious Mustang. So you're about to find out everything that makes up this car, which ultimately is why we call it Vicious Mustang. So this is my friend, Jason Pesaconis from Timeless Customs. Dude, how fun to finally do this, right? I'm gonna just turn it over to you and you're gonna tell everyone from the ground up, all the mechanicals, then go into all the body mods. Like, let's give people a sense of what the hell this car is. When we started this car, Chris came to us with an idea to build the ultimate Pro Touring Mustang. I would consider this car 9 tenths race car, 1 tenth street car. In order to do that, we started with a plain Jane 65 coupe, really nice car, and we literally used the A-pillars and the cowl of the car. That's all that's left from the that's original from the 65, original car, right? right? Everything else you see is handmade. The car was definitely laid out mechanically first, and then the body mods were done tastefully to accept the mechanical aspects of the car. But it's definitely a form following function. All of it was about, we're making a race car that's street legal. That's right. So we've put the suspension up under the car, right? We built a complete chassis, Art Morrison front subframe, a Corvette C7 front suspension. All the bushings have been replaced with Delrim. The rear is a Morrison independent suspension with their Dana center section in it, 342 and a SureTrack rear end. And we wanted something that would take the power too, right? So yeah. we knew we wanted to have a power number that not just you could brag about, but you know, a thousand wheel horsepower when this car was built, that was a big number. So it was, because the car debuted, if I remember correctly, was it 17? 16, 16, 16, it was. 2016. Yeah. Right. A thousand wheel horsepower was our benchmark. The car's all tied up with a 14 point chromoly cage. Then we put the motor as far back as we could. So the motor set back. Which let's pull yeah, it up while you're that. talking For about sure. it. Yeah. <laughs> so the motor's set under the cowl about four inches. The engine itself, it's a Coyote. The Coyote block has been sleeved by QMP for us, right? So it has a dart and sleeve set in it. And that's really what makes a Coyote robust. It's got a manly rotating assembly in it. The engine turned out to be about 5.1 liters. It has a set of CNC ported GT350 cylinder heads, all comp valve train, comp voodoo camshafts, MMR timing chain and all their adjusters and their tensioners. On top of the Coyote sits a Magnuson 1.8 liter intercooled supercharger and it's pulleyed at about 16 pounds of boost and then what you don't see is is what we've done is we've compound boosted the engine and i think this is truly one of the first cars that has ever done this in this pro touring style aspect right yeah compound boosted means we have a set of turbochargers in the fenders that are feeding the supercharged motor right so the supercharger comes on off the hit and then the turbos take over up top so they're precision and they're 68 millimeter ball bearing turbos and they're good for 26 pounds of boost. 
So they override the supercharger and they blow tubes up the fenders into the air to air intercoolers and then back under the car into the supercharger. The supercharger still retains its air to water intercooling system as well. So it's double intercooled, runs on the 85, has a huge aeromotive brushless fuel system in it, big injectors, runs a ton of E85 through it. And we make right now at 26 pounds of boost, we make a thousand three wheel horsepower, 855 foot pounds of torque, I believe. Spin the thing, I think the cutoff right now is 9,100 RPM, right? That's the other thing, it revs to the moon. Revs to the moon, right. <laughs> and then the cool part is, it has a center force clutch, a dual dyad, and then it has MCO sequential six speed transmission and it paddle shifted, air shifted, right? <laughs> and millisecond shifts, Yep. Matte throttle shifts, right? Yep. Wide open shifts. Chrome Ollie drive shaft, Florence drive shaft, going to that Dana that we talked about. All the exhaust has been obviously built by us. It's an inch and three quarter stainless tube header, feeding the turbos and then three inch Magnaflow back to an X pipe, back to a set of Magnaflow race mufflers, out the single exhaust tailpipe. Carbon ceramic Brembo brakes. And with this new wheels, I know we'll get into the wheel, but right. with this new wheel setup, you really see the brakes right. now. Right. Ritec triple adjustable shocks, a must for a car that you're gonna drive like this, yeah. right? We set the car up when we initially built the car, we wanted the car to sit low and we wanted everything to be tucked up nice and tight. The fender flares, if you look at them, we got, not only have we flared the fenders, but we've raised the radius of the, of the wheel well openings, right? Because the car really sits about three inches lower than you would just your standard Pro Touring Mustang. So we brought the radiuses up, flared the fenders to accommodate the forge line, Three piece, 19 by 11, and 19 by 14 and a half inch wheels. When we built the car, we really looked on the market and said, all right, what kind of tire can we run? Because yeah. Because that's, you know, you need to have a tire to be able to drive a car like this. So totally, dude. This car is on the Kumo Viper ACR tire. It's a 305 30, 19 inch front tire, and it's a 355 30, 19 <laughs> in the rear, which is the biggest radial street legal tire anyone makes. Yep. So we really wanted to do that. That was that was a must for us. Yeah. Tire package, the wheel package, the brake package, it all was the upper echelon. Yep. So initially when we built this car, it was all steel. The body mods, like you said, there's numerous ones. All the front end is obviously built to feed the intercoolers. The air to air sit out front. The water to air sits front and center. Behind that sits a massive three core radiator. The fans are ducted through the hood, so the air comes through the car and right over the hood creates downforce and great way to cool the car. We've got a set of brake ducts. A lot of people think that these feed the turbos and these don't feed the turbos, these feed the front brakes. The turbos are fed through the air boxes in the fenders. They breathe through a set of cane and square filters. Yep. I like that we're touching on it too, dude. There's so many of the body mods, especially when the car was in silver, it highlighted so many of the body mods. Like these are, it's kind of funny how they're almost starting to disappear. Part of it's I've probably gotten used to it over the years. Right. But it's like pure function. You had to be able to plumb right. for, the, for the turbos. Right, so we needed the boost tubes coming off the turbos to be able to get over the front tires without getting into our ride height or getting yeah. into our travel. Totally. So that's the boost tube running up under there to get to the air to air and cool. Yeah. Body mods are really about, they're there to look bitching, but also they're there because mechanically we needed these things to be able to deal with what we had. Totally. The other thing is the track width is a lot wider than a Mustang is, right? So in front we've got a three inch flare and in the rear we've got a five inch flare. So overall the car's eight inches wider than the rear and six, seven inches wider up front. Track width is wider. Yep. We've got a Woodward power steering rack, which is by far the ultimate power steering rack for a car that's doing business like this. Yeah. Especially when you have a tire this wide that yeah. you're asking to work, right? And you're full lock to lock on this. There's no, Absolutely. don't turn it too hard left or right. No, you can go lock to lock yep. and, and no issues with the you know wheel and tire touching the flare or touching the suspension. We took a great amount of time in laying this car out prior to skinning it because we wanted this car to work, you know? We, yeah. wanted, we wanted this car to be what it could be. This go around, we brought Fusion in, and Fusion popped us a hood and a deck lid based on our original pieces, right? Yep. But these now are carbon fiber, so, you know, a car that used to weigh 3,400 pounds, now we've got down to 3,200 pounds. Really? Because you shaved, what, close to 100 pounds just in the hood, we right? We lost 140 in the hood and about 40 in the trunk. <laughs> yeah. That's serious. Yeah, you know, when you build a hood that takes and accepts all the things that it needed to out of steel, it's a serious piece. So going this route, you know, now we have an eight pound hood, which is, yep. Amazing. Unbelievable. Amazing. I love that you left this exposed 
and oh gosh, it really is different than it was. Right. But to like not leave any of this exposed is so damn cool, dude. I wanted the car to look like this go round, like the car put on a tuxedo. Yeah. I yeah. wanted it to look grown up this go round. It was <laughs> it was bad boy before, but now it's yeah. Now it's grown yeah. up. It's second life. It's grown up. It's the best way to put it. it, it and it's my buddy Sean Smith, right, who initially said, "Hey, media attention's died down a little bit. Maybe Chris wants to do a color change or something, you know." And, and I gotta say, like I know Chris was hesitant about it. I was hesitant because the car becomes so iconic for what it was. And dude, flat out, this to me looks better. It just looks more elegant. It still looks as mean as it ever did. I was saying to you as we were getting started how much it shows all the perfect gaps everywhere on the car. You see all fitment. the gaps, the fitment of right. the bumpers now, right. you know. Right. There's details that I didn't see on the car before. Didn't stand out. Yeah. They're showing themselves right. in black, you right. know. As we move back, once again, race car mentality. So no power windows. The door system was made very easy. The door's on a little pole here. Oh. It's just a little detail that I really think is cool instead yep. of just having that door handle. The MCO's paddle shifted, which I think is just awesome. You don't have to take your hands off of the steering wheel. You keep your hands exactly where they need to be. This car, everything happens in it incredibly quick. Fast. Fast. It's and the shifts are violent. Violent, violent they right? <laughs> You don't want to have to take your hands off the steering wheel. You don't want to have to reach for something. You don't want to have to do any of those things, right? Totally agree. And I think that's what's so surreal about driving this car is, is I drove it again today and I kept thinking to myself, man, it's like driving a super bike or riding a super bike. It just, the power to weight ratio is just so massive and it just feels so well sprung and so well suspended that yeah. it just really has, it has a feeling like nothing else. It yeah. really does. It's yeah. its own animal. You know? I agree. And it's a race car. It makes, the gears are straight cut in the transmission, the supercharger and the turbochargers and the wastegates, everything's cracking and popping and banging. <laughs> and, and I'm excited, dude. I haven't been in the car in quite some time, right? right? right. But I have so many memories of this rolling along you can't really talk to each other because it's no. so damn loud. I mean, the tranny alone is like, I don't even want to talk. I just want to listen to that thing sing. Right. It's spitting flames and it's just really upset and, you know, and it's like you, you have to literally yell at each other. Then you just finally go, ah, whatever. Just we'll enjoy talk it. when we stop, right. you know right. what I mean? Right. Another thing we kind of didn't hit on was, is this car's full MoTeC equipped. And there's that race car thing again, you know, it's got a MoTeC harness, mil spec harness in it, it has a MoTeC dash display, MoTeC controls. Just the upper echelon of what you can put in a streetcar, right? Yeah. So yeah. that mentality again of, of just the ultimate. It all comes together. The seating position has been moved back probably four to six inches as well as the engine and transmission yeah. combo. And you get so used to it in this car, but you're way back there. Right. When you're looking at the shifter, if you look down the column, it looks really long. It does. Mm -hmm. And the column's long and, and Really because I like a car, when you have your hands on the wheel, you have a 90 degree bend in your yeah. elbows. It's just you're very really almost almost NASCAR seating in this, not right. quite as tight, but it's right here. It feels like it's purposeful. Mm -hmm. uh, I totally agree. The seats are Sparco 2000, one of my favorite fixed buckets. They've obviously been wrapped in leather, but the seat itself is just a phenomenal seat. It puts you in position. It keeps you where you need to be. Yep. Has a set of DJ five point harnesses in it. There for business, right? Strap mm -hmm. you in and makes you feel like you're ready to go do this. Right? 100% dude. It's a refined race car, but there's no AC, there's no heater. You don't need the heater because it heats up so much inside. I mean, <laughs> And really, it's not that bad if you think that all the exhaust channels down the middle of the car, right? All of the trans tunnel was made out of aluminum so that we can remove it, so we can service the car. So mm -hmm. those trans tunnels, they just deduce fast and pop right out pop of the car. Pop right out of here. And you can get to anything you need to get mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. So there's really not a lot there, but once again, it was thought about, hey, serviceability of the car, being able to go ahead and, and check things and make sure everything's okay. Just really spent a lot of attention to detail in the way things were laid out so that we could mm -hmm. go back later, fix or repair or replace or service anything, we could do that. So mm -hmm. everything drops out of the car, everything is really capable of servicing. And that's something that I think is really important as well. There's a couple things just body-wise that we didn't touch on. Obviously, drip rails shaved down. Right, we got rid of the door handle. We shaved the drip molding and turned yep. it into a body line. 
We have flush mount glass. Mm -hmm. We've left it seamless, which I really prefer now. I like it how it just it's like looks like it's floating in the car, both the front and the rear glass. Yeah. The quarter yeah. glasses have been done the same way. We've put a set of rocker spats on the car. They really just try to keep everything under the car, stay under the car, right? We've got such a massive tire throwing rocks front and rear that totally let's protect everything we can right all the under trays are designed not only for a little bit of aero but also to keep everything under the car and then we've gone in the rear and we've added a massive diffuser in the rear yes. of the car we've got a deck lid on it now that's carbon again but we've tightened up all the end caps we've tightened up the rear bumper uh, we've built that rear diffuser we've added the center exhaust this go around we had a really bitchin stainless center yeah. tip machined right and i just think it eh, it just needed that it's really it's just, slick that i mean the old screen whatever it was fine it was real functional right <laughs> you used to blow it out all the time when this out. thing spits Absolutely. flames and stuff that's a subtle touch that's one i think a lot of people might walk by and miss it right and this you know i was showing you before dude in black this detail shows itself so well i missed that completely and i've known this when car about as good as anyone when it was in its matte silver look you right. know and the diffuser on this it's another one of those pieces to me it borders on not attractive but with this car because it's such a pissed off violent car it's like that's pure race car stuff right there it's like right. look at some time purposeful. attack cars they're not pretty they're just purposeful they're that's functioning right. you know right. so, God, it's so fun being around this car again bro like i said i drove it today and i kind of forgot how special it is. Yeah. It, it's a super special car. It obviously is the first opportunity in my career to build something so over the top. Yeah. And really given carte blanche to what we wanted to achieve. We built this car initially in nine months. You have to remember, we put this car up on the chassis table and we built this car, bodywork, painted it, interiored it, and brought it to SEMA in nine months. I know, I right? remember Which it well. Just it Try was, that one on for a second, you guys. Count it about 10,000 hours in, in less year. than a year right. from coupe to fastback the, and then all that it is. I mean, it's, it's, I remember well, dude. I mean, we were all up here all the time this and car aged we were just getting to know each other, you know, it's, right. it's, it's, so, I mean, it's been a long ride, right. really. So in essence, it launched the upper echelon of what we can do for a car as a, as a business. Mm -hmm. it, it really launched Autotopia's truly did video show, right? It's been a stepping stone for so many people. Everybody who's been involved, you know, I think from Forge Line, Aeromotive, you talk to anybody who's been involved in this project, I think they're all very proud of what this car has done. And I think now that they'll see it again, it's just the icing on the cake this go around, right? It's, it's gonna... one of those rare cars. Like I can think of a handful through the years where they're so iconic, you just, you just know that car. Right. Everybody knows that car. And even the person that goes, no, I can't think of it. You go, you sure you've never seen this? And you show up, oh yeah, of course I know that right. car. You know, this is the first car we ever, as a shop, we ever named. And is it really the it first really one was. you ever the named? The first one we ever named. We've <laughs> never built a car and it had a name. So for us, it was known as Vicious from day one. It really was, you know, there was never a, a point in time where we'd be like, what should we call this car? It came and it was like, that's the car. And, and you know, we built this car with a lot of people power. I mean, I think we had 18 guys on the crew at that time. And, and there was a couple months there where every single one of us were doing at least 45 hours, 50 hours a week on this thing to get it to where it needed to be to go to yeah. Santa. So, I mean, it just taught us a lot as a business. It gave us an opportunity. I'm really proud of the car. I drive the car and I forget how special it really <laughs> is because there's nothing like it, you know? I hate E85. I hate the way it smells. I hate the smell. I hate it. I right? hate the smell, what dude. This, you know when you fire this car up and you hear it run and you smell it, you know this car means it's business. It's business. It, it no, really it's is. business. It really now is. it's just business and it's re it's dressed up real nicely right. as well. Right. Absolutely. You know, there's a lot of little touches to this car, like even the amount of work we put in just to the taillight housings, little stuff like that that you really you don't notice because there's so much wild stuff to look at. There's a full halon fire system in the car. Overall. I'm really proud of the way the car turned out this time. I really loved the car initially, but it looks very special this way. It looks grown up. I'm with you, dude. I'm, I've seen little updates along the way on it, but to see it dressed up like this, out in the sun, how much it brings out the red interior. I have not been in this car in forever. Gotta put this guy back on. Ah, God, I forgot what it's like to sit in this car, bro. I mean, the pedal configuration, the way they sit right here. And I'm sitting up a little bit much right now for me, but. The focal point really is the cage. 
and what it does for the car, the integrity and structural integrity, and maybe safety as well. You know, this isn't a race cage, meaning you couldn't go out and race this car in competition. Yeah. But we've tried to incorporate as many things as we can to keep you safe as an occupant and do open track days in the car. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of chrome molly tube in this car cross brace in the roof of the car in case it ever had to go on its lid. A lot of bar behind the dash that you don't see that ties up the cowl. Bars go into the engine compartment, obviously they go back to the back. Steering column is a little bit on the long end, but like I said, it yeah, was important right here. to me to be right where you needed it to be. I mean, be. it's right here ready to drive. The paddles are right where you need them to uh -huh. be with your fingers, so you don't have to reach for them. Yep. You know exactly where they're at. The steering wheel comes off, and the reason it does that is because it makes it a lot easier to get in and out of this It car. really does. I haven't seen these in so long. This is another one of those, like the diffuser, where it borders on not the prettiest thing. But then when you have the wheel on, the positioning of them, I mean, honestly, you're never missing them when you're driving. They're not in your way at all. They're not. They're totally not impeding on your hands. Right. But when you, you need to grab to a gear, it's right here. Right there. You know. Yeah. So, I always loved that about this car that it was all function first. Then let's find a way to make it look cool. So obviously, we have the Motec display. We have all the Motec switch pads. We have a wheel with brake pedal assembly in it. Top mounted brake pedal assembly. The factory Ford style or electronic fly-by-wire gas pedal in the right. car. Dash pops out just like a race car does. We've mm -hmm. already talked about the center console How this comes out comes of the car, out. Mm -hmm. you know? It's all about business. It's all about business, <laughs> and, and we did decide to go all red in the interior, and some people love it, some people hate it, but it's just one of those things. It's just like everything else on this car. It's overwhelming. And, it's so and, fitting. And that's what we wanted. We wanted something that was in your face. Yeah. The one other thing I just want to point out is, because they're so obvious here, ARP's all over this car, isn't it? I couldn't even tell you how many ARP bolts and are in this car, but everything is held together with ARP in yeah. this car. There's probably 80 pounds of ARP hardware in this car. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. <laughs> it's got to bring you back a little bit. It totally it, does. It just, it's got to bring you back to, especially as tired as you probably are right now. It's like, oh yeah, this really fucking reminds me of 2016. There's competition in this business. You always are constantly trying to do things that not only benefit your business, but outdo or, or one up the next guy, right? This is not a new car. This is uh, this is an old car, but I th yeah. but I think it's timeless. And what this car does, I'm so proud of because, like I said, I don't know of a car that you get in and drive like this and it's so visceral. Yeah. And the funny yeah. thing is, is we always talk about a thousand wheel horsepower, but the reality is, is there's nobody that's ever driven this car that feels comfortable keeping that accelerator pinned to the floor. It's that violent. No. This car is that violent that you really have to really think and second guess what you're doing as inputs because it's it happening is fast. so capable yeah. and it happens so quickly in this car. I agree. So I agree, dude. Uh, Even on track, like street driving is one thing, but absolutely. I've been on the racetrack in this car. You can feel when this car gets on the racetrack, you can feel that it built for that. It's, it, it's home it there. Does, it's home it, there. It Temps just, stay nice on it. There's cars, man, that they're great looking, but man, what this car does stirs your emotions is, is just another level to me. It yeah. really is. So. Yeah. Now you guys, just so you know, okay, we're going to go drive it. We're not going on a racetrack today. The car makes just over a thousand at the tire. It truly is a violent vehicle. So we're going to go drive it, get you a sense of what the car is about. And don't get pissed off if we're not doing donuts and throwing it all around. This car, for us, it's on its way to SEMA. For you, it's already been at SEMA. So we're going to go for a drive. So you guys have noticed Jason's not in the car with me. It's not that he's scared of my driving. He definitely agrees I drive like a pussy, which is fine. It's more that he's still prepping two other cars that are going to SEMA next week. All the final detailing that has to happen to the car. Yeah, there's a lot, I'll just say that. Man, I haven't been in this car in a long time, you guys. Right away, the first thing that stands out to me since it's been a minute, besides the wild, trippy, cool seating position in here, is the whine of those straight cut gears in that Emco sequential, man. I mean, it sounds like an airplane about to take off. And then there's that, the 
ridiculously fast gear shifts, almost no drop in RPMs whatsoever. You know that no lift shift is just, man, there's something, there's nothing like it. There's truly nothing like it. Boy, this car just wants to run. It just wants to go, man. It's such a trip. All the mechanical sounds. Everything had to function on this. God, I just can't get over. Oh, what an experience, you guys. It's so visceral. Even just cruising like this, I'm going, I don't know, 50-ish miles an hour. And, uh, it's like so primed and ready to just go. if you want to you know smooth out your downshift a little bit and this car really likes to be shifted up and down under load if you're not going to put it under load clutch it makes it a little smoother the intent of this car is to shift totally and completely under load Such a wild experience, even it. Yeah, we're going 48 miles an hour. There's a second gear. I'll give you a minor pull. God dang. It's just so violent. And I mean, those are mild pulls hitting 5,000 RPM quickly up to triple digits and like that's just going easy and rolling into it and that sound I know Jason said this in the interview and I agree with him there's really nothing quite like this car in my opinion it's it's such a crazy experience getting to drive this thing again Man, it's just amazing. So we're gonna do a couple of mild little pulls, you guys. And I say mild, I mean, truth is, there's nothing about this car that's mild. I mean, it really is just purely aggressive all the time. The mildest driving in this is still a thrill. that it's manual brakes and they're those massive carbon ceramics so like right now while they're a little on the cool side you know there's not a lot there this too 
Everything about this was thought out to make it race car ass. tiny little area so my little shifting 4500 or so boom third gear I'm at 75 miles an hour I mean it's just so fast it's hard to give you a sense of it on camera and I know because we've shot this car in the past even on track it's hard because what it takes is a pro driver on enough road I think car always wants to be under load it like it hates when you're light on throttle it's so funny oh man i miss this car i can't wait for chris to get some time in the seat silence me this car like Jason said it in the interview things happen very fast with this car even if you're not going that fast up but it's so quick everything's so responsive <laughs> this morning boom here we are any little residual smoke you see that's simply from oil in the turbos just stuff burning off god dang so funny you guys know me it's pretty rare that i'm speechless man Driving this car, like you feel like it takes every bit of focus you have. I mean, for one, it's my buddy Chris's car. For two, you know, this car was north of a million dollars to build. Number three, it's fresh, it's back on the scene. And I mean, the biggest thing is, it's a little over a thousand at the tires. Obviously not that much travel, you guys. But the idea that because the tires can come up into the wheels, the flares aren't just wide, but they're up. So the amount of travel, the movement that the suspension has.
pretty sure we got enough rollers, yeah? Or flybys? I thought there two more. I'm sure you're not bummed about that. Twist my fucking arm, here we go. up around 9,900 I believe. You're like barely into the power and it's friggin' violent. It's so mind numbing, man. Wild, bro. Fucking wild. There's nothing like this car, bro. No. I'm not even talking about, fuck all about the looks. There is nothing like this fucking car. Nothing. There's that. nothing like this, dude. No. Well, man, all I can say is it is good to have Vicious Mustang back. I think it looks better than it ever did. I absolutely love the black with the red interior. So the looks for me are just no brainer. But I had forgotten just how good this car is. It had been a while. I hope this video gets across to you guys how special this car is, because the truth is, there is nothing, nothing, nothing like Vicious Mustang. Nothing. One of the greatest rides I've ever been in, in my entire life, hands down. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and <laughs> I'm a little beat right now, I gotta admit, man. So I'll see you in the next one. All right, you guys, later.